Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I rise in support of this emergency funding bill. This emergency funding is desperately needed in our communities back home. You know, in my office every day, I'm sure that most of you have had the same experience. Agencies are streaming through my office, one after the other, wringing their hands, saying how much it's going to hurt their agency because of this unsigned budget by the governor. I agree. And I remind them that we've kept our word, passing budgets on time, that fund the vital programs that they're concerned about. I remind them that the only obstacle to the continued operation of their organizations is the governor's signature. You know, I think the governor has a new motto. Why be part of the problem when you can be all of the problem? Every day we continue without a budget, critical services like the rape crisis centers and services for autism and intellectual disabilities, Alzheimer's, veterans programs, food banks, and hundreds more are not funded, they're not able to serve the public. Now I've heard from the other side that, you know, we have no budget. Of course we have a budget. We have the only budget out there. The other side hasn't put forth a budget. If they love the governor's proposal so much, let's see it in a bill. They haven't put it forth, and they won't, because they know they can't vote for it and they can't support it. It's easy to come up here and say no, but they won't put forth the governor's budget. Now, our budget, as the appropriations chair has already well stated, has funded 70% of what the governor wanted. Of the 401 line items in that budget, 274 were funded. Yet he vetoed that, and he continues to threaten to veto what we're about to pass today. And when I go home, the people ask me, for what reason? What reason? They're trying to figure this governor out. What reason is he going to veto this emergency funding? And it's simple. Because he keeps insisting on a massive $5 billion tax increase that nobody wants back home. And the public may have forgotten about this, but I'm going to remind them once again that not even one member of this House, not even one member of his own party voted for that tax increase that would have supported the governor's proposal. It's quite embarrassing for this governor, if you ask me. And everywhere I travel back home, and I travel a lot around, a lot of events like you all do, people come up to me one after the other, and they say, stand firm against this governor. I tell you, my prayer is that the scales will fall from the eyes of my colleagues, and they will see that the people are not with them. They are with us on this budget. So we're here to govern. The people back home are still paying taxes every day, and the money's in the Treasury. We need to distribute those funds in the amounts we've already agreed upon. Delaying is senseless and not supported by the taxpayers. Now, I've heard the other side say, you know, compare this budget to trick-or-treat and Halloween. Let me tell you something. This governor has proposed enough tricks to make David Copperfield blush. So I tell you, there's an old saying in business that success is what happens when 10,000 hours of preparation meets one moment of opportunity. Well, we have that opportunity before us right now. So I tell you, and I ask my colleagues to vote yes for the emergency funding and provide the services needed in our community. Thank you, Mr. Speaker.